you win a prize for that. Thank you. Um, right. Uh, who's next? Next is um, David Morgan. Ah, here we go. So, hi. Hi, hi everyone. I'm David Morgan. I am uh, the Green Party's local council candidate for Wavertree Ward, uh, where I've been living since I first moved to Liverpool 11 years ago. Um, and uh, for a lot of that time, I wasn't really kind of involved in politics, but then just after the European elections in 2014, there was a whole bunch of kind of things going on in my life that really brought home kind of the scale of the climate crisis and the scale of the action that's kind of needed. You know, much like Gary was kind of saying earlier, it was that kind of epiphany kind of moment. Um, and that's the point at which I joined Liverpool Green Party. Um, and within just a couple of months of joining, um, I had become quite heavily involved um, and wound up becoming uh, our target work candidate for Green Bank. So for two years, I was uh, carrying out the role that Dan's in now. Um, and, you know, we worked very hard, uh, myself and kind of Lawrence Brown, and um, we were working, who's our councillor for Green Bank, and we were working very hard over those two years, but unfortunately didn't quite manage to make it through at that point. Um, and then I had to take a couple of years out, uh, just as we discovered we were expecting our second child. Um, and then, uh, yeah, basically a couple of years ago, um, I started coming to the rest of the party um, and saying that I really felt that we should start looking at kind of Wavertree Ward as a very strong kind of prospect for future success. Um, and the reason for that was because, you know, if we cast our minds back that period of time about two or three years ago, um, you'll remember that, you know, unfortunately Wavertree was kind of, the name of Wavertree was becoming synonymous with the entire kind of national Labour Party kind of anti-Semitism scandal. Um, there was a real, there's a real turning point moment um, in our community, which is when The Guardian basically sent some journalists up to Wavertree um, and they essentially did a complete kind of hatchet job story in our whole community, portraying it as just this kind of real, you know, hotbed of regressive kind of values, totally derelict, a complete kind of grim up north. Um, poverty porn kind of story and of course I think anyone that's familiar with kind of the city will know that that is just absolutely not waver tree in the slightest um, and what happened at that point was that you know that that article suddenly became the catalyst for a lot of local people turning around and deciding that they'd kind of had enough with kind of their community being ignored their community being run down um, a very active and strong kind of local community group um, started up around that time, um, which was Love Wavertree. Um, and they successfully organised a big Car Free Day event um, back in what must have been late 2019, I think. Um, and that was exactly kind of the same moment as I was kind of arguing that the Green Party really ought to kind of focus on Wavertree and try and kind of tap into that uh, sentiment. Um, and harness that to try and really help bring about kind of real change, not just in our local community, but across the city as well. And I'm very pleased to say that over the 18 months since we really started kind of seriously campaigning, things have been going very, very well for us indeed. Um, I've managed to build very good uh, contacts and relationships with all of those kind of local community groups. Um, we, out of all the kind of parties that are targeting kind of Wavertree, um, we've been absolutely the most consistent in terms of communicating with local residents. Um, even though we've now been through kind of three lockdowns over the last year, our kind of campaigning hasn't really kind of skipped a beat. We've managed to kind of you know, work within kind of the restrictions that have been presented to us and managed to keep kind of communicating with local residents consistently. Um, and of course now, as we're kind of coming into this last kind of furlong um, of the election kind of campaign, we of course have all of these kind of events blowing up uh, around the council, a lot of things kind of finally coming to light, um, which I think a lot of people are going to be, you know, very shocked and surprised and upset by, um, but which will hopefully, which can hopefully now act as a real kind of catalyst for change uh, in our city and for kind of a new, hopefully a new wave of kind of politicians to come in 
um, and help steer the city towards something far better than we've seen uh, in the last 10 years. So yeah, we're going to be very busy over the next six weeks. Uh, I have to say when we started this campaign, it felt like a little bit of an experiment to see how it goes. Um, but I have to say, as of right now, about six weeks out from the election, I'm actually feeling very positive and very optimistic about our chances um, of get, gaining our first kind of Green Council in Wavertree. Um, and if we do, I think, you know, that will be an enormous deal, um, you know, even if kind of Dan gets in as well. You know, those will be our first new councillors that we've managed to get elected since, I think, 2014. Um, and um, it will, I believe, be the first time that we'd ever have won a seat directly from Labour as well, um, which would also be the case in kind of Green Bank if we're successful there. So if we can pull off either or both of those uh, contests, then that will be a real phenomenal kind of landmark achievement for Liverpool Greens. Um, okay. And I think some a very good kind of building block for the next couple of years. Okay. Um... One moment, someone's turned up. Um, okay, um, our next speaker is Staff Pitchers, who is our um, ooh, uh, candidate for St Michael's.